It's a big week as Mercury retrograde ends and even more importantly, the lucky planet Jupiter is on the move. Welcome to the Mainly Moonology podcast. I'm your host, Yasmin Boland, an award-winning astrologer and the Sunday Times best-selling author of books including Moonology and creator of the Moonology Oracle Cards. My intention for this podcast is to help you understand how you can create your dream life using Mainly Moonology, the moon, as your guide. So this week is a big week. As I just said on a little reel I did on Instagram and Facebook, it's not as big as the eclipse weeks as far as I'm concerned. Uh, in fact, what happened was I <laughs> I saw an astrologer. I can't actually remember which astrologer. Honestly, I can't. I'm sorry. But I saw an astrologer on Facebook or Instagram going, oh, my God, it's such a big week. And I'm like, oh, my God, what's happening? What have I not thought of? And, and, I, and I had a quick look at the astrology. And there is quite a lot happening. But I think the thing is those eclipses were so massive, squaring Pluto and, you know, all sorts. I hope you're feeling okay. I'm feeling okay. Uh, and But this week is big, and in a way, it's kind of an upswing of a week. So let's dive into that. So the first thing to say is that this week sees the end of Mercury retrograde, and that is big. That is big. May 15, in fact, the day I'm recording this, I'm a little bit late. Sorry about that. Let's blame the end of Mercury retrograde for my disorganization. Uh, Mercury retrograde is ending. So Mercury has been going backwards in the sign of Taurus for the last few weeks. And uh, that could have brought about some confusion to do with money. Maybe you've been having conversations with someone about the best way forwards financially. Maybe you've been thinking about what's the best way forwards financially for you and trying to work it all out. Reviewing, revising, rethinking, revamping, anything to do with your finances that keeps you sort of feeling comfortable and safe, anything you've been doing along those lines, it was the right time to be asking yourself the question of what should I do? What's the best thing to do? What's the best way forwards with this particular financial issue or problem? Or maybe you're lucky enough to have had a windfall and you've been asking yourself, what am I going to do with this money I've just got? It doesn't really matter exactly what the question is. The answer is just wait a little tiny little bit longer because Mercury is going direct today. That means the retrograde is ending today. But, you know, it's a very bit of very common bit of wisdom that you'll get from astrologers, which is that after the retrograde, don't do anything straight away. OK, just give yourself even up to a week, so maybe this time next week when the next podcast comes out, we always come out on Monday at 4 p.m. or usually do, except when I'm late like this week. Uh, I'm only about going to be about an hour and a half late, but still. Um, and apologies for that. I, I am sorry. Uh, anyway, long, I was at the accountants, weirdly enough. So there you go. I had a, a meeting with the accountant that I thought would take about an hour and took about two and a half hours, which has just thrown my timetable out. Very Mercury direct in Taurus kind of stuff. Anyway, the long and the short of it is when Mercury uh, retrograde finishes, which it's doing today, you kind of don't want to do anything straight away. You just want to kind of like marinate in all the information you've been given. Don't make any sudden moves. Don't do anything right now because you might have to just redo it later. And, you know, give yourself a chance to catch up with yourself because you've had lots of information and now hopefully you know the way forwards. Um, when it comes to where Mercury is now going direct in your chart, just a little shout out to all my mainly Moonology members. We will be sending you the, um, oh no, we've already sent you the Mercury direct PDF. So if you haven't had, if you haven't seen it yet, have a look through your emails. We'll have um, MMM in the uh, heading of the email. But we will also be sending you a little update about what I'm about to mention, which is that the other really big thing happening this week is Jupiter, the planet of plenty, is actually changing signs. Now, I mean, I think that is actually bigger than Mercury retrograde ending. Um, I mentioned Mercury retrograde ending because Mercury retrograde is the thing everybody's heard of, or not everybody, but lots and lots of people. It's practically a household word these days or phrase or whatever concept. Whereas Jupiter, people don't necessarily know quite so much about. Jupiter is the big planet. It's the planet of good luck, good times, happiness, 
amplification, improvements, um, optimism, and basically all things good, blessings. And uh, so Jupiter tends to stay in each sign for about 12 months. And in fact, uh, it was probably just over a year ago that um, those of us here in the Northern Hemisphere in Europe, around Europe, uh, we had uh, Jupiter moving into Aries. And I remember saying, I remember distinctly saying, um, you know, it didn't augur too well for a speedy end to the Ukrainian, uh, the, the, you know, Russia's war on Ukraine. And, uh, but sort of not saying too much about it because I don't want, didn't want to be a downer or, you know, put a negative, really negative idea out there into the collective consciousness of the people who listen to this podcast. But here we are a year later and, uh, you know, the war hasn't ended. So now let's just continue with that theme. Will the war end now that Jupiter is moving, moving into Taurus? Absolutely, absolutely could. Jupiter is the planet of plenty, the planet of lots of, the planet of ampli amplification. Aries, I'm afraid to say, is we all have Aries in our chart somewhere. We all have Aries in our chart somewhere. Yes, we do. We do. And everybody does, okay? Even if you don't have any planets there, it still rules one of the sectors of your, of your chart. It's ruled by Mars, the god and planet of war. So Jupiter moving to Aries didn't really say, didn't really shriek world peace. That said, um, Taurus is ruled by Venus, the planet of love. Now, Venus is... Um, does have a kind of a more of a warrior side to her. There is no denying it. But um, Venus is also the planet of love and peace and, you know, nice undies and perfume and caresses and, you know, nice petticoats and wine and, well, wine, maybe not so much wine. Wine's a bit Neptunian, but sort of, you know, things that are um, luxurious. And... So Jupiter moving into Taurus is a really good thing. Taurus is also the sign of money. And so it sort of mentioned, sort of typifies the things that we buy with money, uh, the lovely things that we buy with money, because Venus is all about loveliness. So, you know, Jupiter moving into Taurus now does kind of speak of peace more than Jupiter and Aries did. Is it going to have an effect on, you know, Mr. Putin and, and, uh, you know, Vladimir Zelensky, let's hope so. Let's hope they can come to some kind of peaceful agreement. Um, a peaceful agreement is kind of Venusian, but in a way it's a bit more liberal. But I won't get into that. It's still, it's better than Jupiter in Aries in terms of fighting. Um, what it means to all of us, though, on a more individual level is, well, for one thing, it is actually quite positive regarding money because Taurus is the sign that's all about money. Uh, if you have ever been to New York and been down to the um, Wall Street, you may have seen the Bull of Wall Street. It's a really fabulous statue that sits uh, on Wall Street and it's um, about it typifies sort of the whole Wall Street ethos of this charging bull, you know, chasing the almighty greenback or dollar. Um, but it's actually a beautiful thing and it's really funny because, uh, you know, it's so Taurian and in astrology, Taurus is all about, um, you know, cash and abundance and uh, about, I suppose you could say, about chasing the mighty greenback in a kind of, or, or maybe attracting the mighty greenback because Venus very much attracts. But long story short, it should be overall good news for us when it comes to cash. There can be an improvement. Maybe the cost of living crisis is going to go away a little bit. Maybe people are going to start to be more generous and charities will be able to help more people. Maybe people would just be working out better ways to earn money. Um, so there is that. But I must point out that really quickly after Jupiter moves into Taurus, um, Jupiter is going to clash with Pluto which is kind of annoying because it would be lovely if we just had Jupiter moving into Taurus and then harmonizing with Pluto, for example, but that's not going to happen. Uh, so there could be like one or two more power struggles, especially related to cash to have that we all need to have. Uh, but the other thing is as well is have a look at where Taurus is in your chart. Now, if you don't know where it is in your chart, you can find out for free at, well, pause this and go to 
moonmessages.com forward slash free chart moonmessages.com forward slash free chart and find out where uh what site what house taurus rules for you all the information's in there uh, and again a shout out to my mainly moonology members uh, we will be sending you a mini a sort of a cheat sheet on what jupiter in taurus is going to mean for you and if you're not a member of my mainly moonology membership and you'd like to be well, I'll give you a little tip, depending on how fast you act. Um, they were meant to close the doors to my membership uh, about 10 days ago, and someone on my team forgot, and that person on my team actually then uh, had to take some time off work for personal reasons, and, uh, and I definitely didn't want to bother him during this time, and the doors are still open. <laughs> so if you want to hop in before we close the doors, please do. So Jupiter's, um, Jupiter emphasizes self-esteem as well. So, you know, really have a think now. What is my self-esteem like? Do I think I'm worthy of money? You know, I, you know do you think you're worthy of a job? Or do you, need, do you sort of sit around and think, oh, no one's ever going to give me a job. I'm too old or I don't have qualifications or I'm never going to win any money because so I've left it too late or I don't have what it takes or all that stuff. If you think like that, that's what's going to happen because you're never going to aim high. And Jupiter is all about boosting our self-esteem. And Jupiter moving into Taurus in a weird roundabout way to do with the natural astrology chart, which I won't bore you with the details, but astrologers will understand that. It sort of shows us how the more we believe that we're worth, the higher we believe our value to be, the more money we are likely to attract. Um, so yeah, you know, look at trying to tap into Jupiter in Taurus and see if it can encourage you to cultivate a stronger sense of self-worth. You know, and also have a look at your beliefs about material abundance. Do you think money is the root of all evil? For the record, it was uh, the, the actual quote from the from the Bible is, "The love of money is the root of all evil." So you don't have to love money; you can just welcome abundance into your life. There's nothing wrong with it, you know. And and you know, if you've got kids, think about the messages you're giving them. Don't say to them, "Well, you know, darling, money doesn't grow on trees," or you know, "We have we we struggle we're on struggle street" or anything like that. Try not to give negative self-fulfilling prophecies that they're going to take into their um, adulthood. And if you had that when you were little, you know, think about going and getting some deprogramming. I think uh, tapping EFT is a really good way to deprogram. Acupuncture is also springing to mind as a really good way to deprogram. Um, also, you can offer things like that up to the full moon and say, you know, I used to think this, but I'm now releasing that. It's so important because it's our attitude to money that really affects um, what we attract financially. So Jupiter in Taurus is a really good time to work on your self-esteem and your self-belief that you are worth it and you are worth some good money. But as I said, just remember Jupiter's initial clash with Pluto just after Jupiter changed signs could bring about a few tensions, but you know, these tensions could lead to positive outcomes, personal growth, and even breakthroughs because Pluto is the planet of breakthroughs. The other thing to be aware of this week, though, I'm afraid to say, is that we also have one of the trickiest uh, astrological um, aspects or alignments that I know of anyway. You might, other astrologers might disagree with me. I think it's one of the hardest although the new moon eclipse square um, Pluto wasn't easy the other day. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's Mars opposing Pluto. So Mars is the planet of anger <sighs> and Pluto is the planet of fury. And about every two years or so, they oppose each other. That means they are in exactly opposite positions. So, of course, Pluto has just flipped back into the sign, or I should say flipped into the sign of Aquarius, uh, having been in Capricorn for a long time. And um, Mars is now opposing Pluto, will be opposing Pluto from the sign of Leo. All right, so we've got um, Mars in Leo opposing Pluto in Aquarius. So couple of things that spring to mind on that is you know fights about what's good for me versus what's good for the collective uh, struggles that can be quite quite angry and lead to you know even the death of a relationship um, or you know if you're if you do it properly because Pluto is very much about death and rebirth 
it can be um, a big argument that leads to a sort of a temporary death and a rebirth, a bit like we've discussed recently with Pluto, the new moon square. Pluto was Phoenix, the Phoenix rising from the ashes. That's because Pluto was involved, where here's another Pluto thing. So it can be anger that leads to some kind of Phoenix rising from the ashes. Um, and it also can be about um, selfishness, about one person being really selfish and uh, and someone just standing up to them and saying, you're being selfish, stop it. So, you know, overall, um, it's kind of a an intense week. I think overall it's a good week because uh, Mercury retrograde is ending, so you should have all the information you need to make that big decision. And as I said, Jupiter's changing signs, which is brilliant because it means we're all about to get a new burst of luck. Something else to mention as well, I don't think I mentioned this, um, is the fact that when a planet changes signs is often when we feel it most, just like with the Mercury retrograde, it's at the start and the end of the cycle that we feel it most. So do take a moment to find out where Taurus is for you in your chart. And, you know, as I said, if you want to join my mainly Moonology membership, it's a great week to do it uh, because we'll be sending that out very quickly and it will be, if you miss, miss it going out live, it will go into our special kind of um, update section. And also just to mention that we are now nearing the end of the waning cycle, which is the period of the lunar cycle that stretches from the full moon, which we just had the full moon eclipse in Scorpio. And uh, we are moving towards the next new moon, which is going to come up very, very soon. And it's going to be in guess which sign. It's like it's the sign of the month because it's... Um, it's going to be in Taurus, so we will have Jupiter in Taurus, the North Node in Taurus, Mercury recently retrograde now going direct in Taurus, and Uranus, the planet of chaos in Taurus, and now we get the new moon, which is the sun and the moon in Taurus. So it really is worth knowing where, you, where Taurus is in your chart, and also if you're into astrology, have a look at what planets you've got in uh, Taurus and uh, which house Taurus rules in your chart because you can be sure there's going to be a lot going on. So I think one of the best things that we can do, um, you know, just to kind of offer it all up to the divine is to end this podcast with a chant. You know, I love a chant. And the one that's coming to mind for me to do is my favorite go-to cure-all chant, Om Namo Narayani. So if you've listened to this and you've got any, even just a twinge of anxiety about what it's all going to mean, <laughs> well, for one thing, I'm really sorry. For another thing, don't worry, okay, because... You know, this astrology isn't sent to cause us upset. It's just all helping us get pushed along our life cycle so that we live out all the things that we're meant to live out. Um, and there could be, you know, really good news this week as Mercury um, changes directions and Jupiter changes signs. So let's just, I'm just going to chant three times to finish up. Om Namo Narayani which means let's just offer everything this week up to the divine. Let's just surrender all our problems to the divine and ask that the astrology helps us to go in the right direction. I'm just going to do one big Om Namo Narayani chant. Here we go. Om Namo And just to say, by the way, if you're in or near Tampa, Florida this weekend, I am giving a talk at I Can Do It, which is a Hay House event taking place in Tampa, Florida. Just Google it, Yasmin Boland, Tampa, Florida, I Can Do It, Hay House, and you'll find me there. And if you're there, please come up and say hello. I'll be doing a book signing after my talk. All right, lots and lots of love. Have a fantastic week, and I hope to speak to you next week. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of the Mainly Moonology podcast. If you'd like to stay updated with the moon and moonology and astrology and all the other things we cover, be sure to subscribe to the podcast via Apple Podcasts or Spotify. You'll be notified whenever a new episode is up. Also, it would mean a lot to me and my team if you could leave us a glowing 
five-star review on your podcast platform of choice, please. That actually helps more people find us too, which spreads the love and surely also brings you amazing karma for taking a moment to help us out and to help other people find the podcast. Have a great week and I hope to speak to you next week. Lots of love.